Can I ask? So, so when we talk about the medial ramp, it's really the it's the posterior medial aspect uh, of the medial meniscus, and it's it's a very distinct part of the meniscus. So here you, here you see the uh, attachment on the, in this area is really just on the tibia, it's the meniscal tibial ligament, and there is a synovial membrane which is attached superior to the to the meniscus here. The classification we have uh, seen before. So there are different types of these tears. Uh, the most common uh, that, uh, that we, we have to uh, take care of. And we have to say that uh, this is a tear I think we haven't known much about uh, about 10 years ago. So why is it? Because we can only see it when we really inspect the meniscus posteriorly. So that means we need ideally an intercondylar view. I think it's okay if you use a 30 degree scope, you can see it pretty well. And uh, to the right, you see, this is how a normal ramp would look like. So these are the typical ramp lesions. And you see that there's this gap between the wall of the meniscus and the synovial attachment. And well, it depends if this is an acute lesion, you might have a very, uh, a very small hole, but if, the, if you've got a chronic lesion, you really see big distraction and it ends up when you external rotate your tibia, you really end up with a huge defect in the back here. So you, so you always need like a posterior medial in, incision. First, you need to take a needle and then you can palpate the tear. It is also very important to intend to suture this. But for palpation, you need it. And in case you are in doubt, place a posterior medial incision and put the scope in posterior medially to fully inspect the ramp lesion. How do they occur? There's still some different uh, ideas about this. Uh, it's, it's most of the time or only in time in combination with an ACL reconstruction caused by the subluxation. We can most of the time see some bony edema on the posterior aspect of the tibia, but uh, probably also the semimembranosus replacement uh, plays a role in, 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 in these tears. So the prevalence, when we look, depending on the clientele of uh, patients, but you can say it's around 20% where we have these ramp lesions. Should we repair them? We think it's really important to repair them because they add really stability to an ACL. And we know that some of the really unstable ACL injuries uh, are caused by, by, or, uh, uh, caused by these injuries. So here you see the completely empty wall. And as soon as you start to move the knee joint, you see that the gap opens up and this really increases anterior, anterior draw and decreases the stability here. And these lesions do not heal without repairing them. So how to repair them? Anatomic repair from posterior medial, I think is, is the gold standard, but we have to be aware that this is really an advanced technique. So what you need? Well, first of all, it takes about 20 minutes more over time, at least in my hands. You need a good portal placement. The needle is really important. It gives you, it gives you uh, the, uh, the right location. You have to identify the tissue. You debride it with the shaver. Then you need it to reposition, this, reposition it. And this is difficult in the chronic lesion. It can be, sometimes it can be really, the capsule can be really down. So you have to really uplift it. And it's well, I will call it, this is shoulder surgery for the knee surgeon. So if you have a good friend who is a shoulder surgeon, you're not doing this, take a lesson from him. It's really very helpful. And I promised my shoulder surgeon never look into a shoulder type of lesions. So alternatively, well, it's just, a, a, just a, an example of a, of a repair in a 20-year-old football player from Romain Seil, good friend of mine with some extensive experiences. Hopefully the video is running. So yeah, here you'll see the lesion. Here you see this debridement is very important in these chronic lesions, especially you want to create some bleeding. There is good bleeding, there's good healing potential. Oh, in this that... And then you need the shoulder instrumentation mm -hmm. to, to really uh, bring it back. Mm -hmm. And here's in the chronic lesion, there's no way you can repair this from the front, but in this chronic lesion, I think this repair is the best to do. Uh, alternatively, this is more, I say, more user-friendly for the knee surgeon. You can repair it from anterior, especially in the acute lesion. This is possible. It's still tricky, but for sure it's better than to leave these lesions alone. You have to visualize them through the notch.
do the same deep priming from posterior medially, and then you place your anchor and you can really uh, start it by putting your scope from the front and then follow your anchor uh, trans uh, condyla approach. And sometimes I combine this, I place like one suture, bring up the tissue, place one all inside suture from, anti from posterior medially, and then just a second suture from the front. And here's just an example. You see, you can directly visualize how you get the anchor through the, through the uh, evolved uh, tissue. And uh, this paper from Andy Williams and the group has shown that this can be effective. So if you get good, good place, you can get good placement of the anchor. If you can reduce the tissue, this is probably the most challenge. Then you get good fixation strength as an alternative to posterior medial repair. These are some examples from Romero direct repair posterior medially. And they have good healing potential when you see this because it's very good vascularity. So if you reattach it, you have good healing, you have good healing there. So in summary, these ramp lesions are really important. They are relatively new to us knee surgeons. We do have to inspect the posterior medial aspect of the knee in case of ACL instability. Approximately one centimeter. I think it's not all out. At, from which size on we have to repair them. Posterior medial repair, I think, has some advantages to anterior repair, but sometimes you can do a, a combination. It's technically demanding. You really have to practice this before you go into this. I think it's important. If it leads to improved outcome of ACL surgery, we will see. We hope for it, and at least biomechanically and theoretically it does. Thank you very much.